Hi guys, thanks for stopping by. My name's Ashlyn. My name's Zane. And, and we're, we're 21, 21 living in an RV. RV. Today we thought it'd be fun to talk to you guys about the total cost of our RV living situation. It was a lot easier to live in the RV before we started thinking about having to move it. So a major portion of our cost is actually in our vehicle in order to move the thing. As it should be. All right, so we purchased our RV about two years ago and we actually decided to get it off Facebook Marketplace. We paid $6,000 off of a private seller off Facebook and doing that we had to hire somebody to tow that camper to our storage spot in the town that we live in because we didn't have a truck at that point we decided to buy the RV first because we just had this such a big dream and we felt like we could do it it was kind of a crazy way to do it but you know we just jumped head into it we didn't even know the difference between a fifth wheel and a travel trailer. We didn't know you needed different hitches for them or anything. But this camper did come with everything that we needed. We got all of the home goods stuff in it. They left a TV in here. They left like a bunch of the supplies in here. So I definitely do recommend buying secondhand because you actually do get a lot more bang for your buck. You do. And dealerships will tax you out the booty. So just keep that in mind. In my opinion, this was a super attainable goal the way that we handled it because we were able to afford the whole initial cost up front. This was the first camper we looked at. While I don't recommend just buying the first camper that you look at, we got really lucky. We followed our hearts, we followed our intuition, and it landed us in the perfect situation. But anyways, back to the costs. So we paid $6,000 cash up front, and then to get it towed, we actually hired a man off Facebook that had a ton of towing experience, and he really needed money. So we were like, we need a tow. He needs money. So he was able to do that for us for $325 and it was actually a pretty far drive. It was like an hour and a half drive there and an hour and a half drive back. So it was really nice for $325. If you were to get that professionally moved, it would probably be a lot more expensive than that. Initially, we still lived with Zane's mom, so we didn't really have anywhere to park it. We didn't have any way to tow it, so we just had him tow it and drop it off in an RV outdoor storage lot where we paid $60 a month. From there, we let it sit for about a year because we were still, what, 19 at the time? So we were still assessing our situation and figuring out how to move forward from there. After about a year of it sitting in storage, we were finally ready to get it moved. We were feeling stuck at his mom's house and we were ready to leave the nest. So then we got it professionally towed because I looked up online one random night and I realized, oh my gosh, a towing company can actually just tow the RV to our desired spot and we can just let it sit there until we figure out our truck situation. So doing that costed us $250 to get it towed in town professionally. This is a really good option for you if you're wanting to cut down on your living costs and live in something and not move it around. We actually got that truck before we had it professionally moved to our spot, but we didn't have our fifth wheel hitch installed, so that's why we had to hire a professional to move it again. So we got a 2002 2500 HD Duramax diesel with the 6.6 liter. We purchased the truck for $8,500 initially off Facebook Marketplace. So in order to pull any camper over 11,000 pounds, you're going to have to purchase a three-quarter ton diesel truck. A lot of people want diesels right away with their first truck with something cheap and easy to tow, but when they break, they do get expensive. Every single machine will have problems, so a rule of thumb, if you don't have a savings account over 10 k or at least five grand in an emergency fund, I wouldn't recommend one of these trucks at all. When we first got the truck about a year ago, we knew it needed work, but it was also one of the proven most reliable model years. We wanted something reliable to tow our rig, regardless of if we had to put money into it. And we were always told growing up that the older things actually last longer than newer things. Which is very proven to be true. So this truck is actually as old as we are, fun fact. So instead of taking out a loan on a newer $100,000 diesel truck, we decided to redo the whole truck over the course of a year and give it what it needs. So when we first got the truck, it needed roughly $7,000 worth of work. So we took it in for a new front diff case and it was resealed. We took it in for a few different other seals and as well as adding a lift pump, which is just generally for fuel security in terms of having it clean and making sure that the fuel system doesn't have too much stress on it so other components break. Roughly four or five months later, we got the whole front end done because it needed it. Those Chevy front ends only last about 100,000 to 140,000 miles and that costed roughly about $5,000. So we got every single component in the front end replaced, not even going to go through it, you can do your own research. 
So the truck ran for about a year without issue and we originally bought it thinking we were gonna have to do the fuel injectors anyway. Thankfully we got an extra year out of them because I did buy the lift pump. So buying the fuel injectors, I did my research and got the SAC tips which are known to last over 150,000 miles eliminating any of the injector issues that this year of truck had which was the only issue that was said to be a long-term problem with this model year. So it's one thing to look into if you're getting one of these. So we got SAC 45% overs. They're a slightly bigger injector so it gets more fuel obviously you have to have uh, aftermarket tuning to make it run right so the injectors were two thousand dollars themselves and the labor to put them in because the injectors are under the valve cover and that ended up being twenty five hundred dollars so with the added fuel with the bigger injectors and the fuel system with the lift pump you're gonna have to tune it together so that it runs right so we had to get EFI live which is a reputable tune company by a local diesel shop that knows what they're doing in terms of calibrating the correct tunes for the correct truck and they uploaded five different tunes. A single tune would only cost about $500, but with the DSP-5 switch tuner, it's gonna cost roughly about $750 to get it installed by a reputable shop. So then with the added horsepower, 150 plus extra on an already 300 horsepower engine is a recipe for disaster with the stock transmission. And the transmission we had on it was already giving us some slight problems in terms of going into lip mode sometimes. It was the original transmission in the rig, so we knew we were going to eventually have issues. So to bring it all together and to put that added power to the ground, you're going to have to upgrade the drivetrain. So with everything else involved, we had to build the transmission, which is going to cost a lot of money. And that's where we're at today. <laughs> Uh, what did he say was the high-end estimate for the transmission rebuild? High-end estimates roughly around seven grand uh, and that's due to inflation. It used to be roughly five to six. Uh, so we're gonna see if hopefully we can get the lower end of that stick. And mind you the transmission is starting to go out right before we're about to leave for a cross-country <laughs> road trip. And we're not about to be on the side of the road in limp mode trying to get the rig back on the road. So we're grateful that it's happening before we leave but it is a tricky situation to be in in the moment. So now everything on that rig except for the transfer case has been touched, has been done, everything's complete, the truck's ready for the road. All right now that we've talked about the RV costs and the truck costs Costs. I did want to get into RV insurance now I'm not sure what other full-timers use I'm not even personally sure if our RV insurance is full-time so don't take my advice as the one truth we're only paying for six months out of a year for our insurance and that comes to hundred and seventy five dollars a month and we go through progressive if any of you full-time RVers have any advice or what you go through for insurance, definitely leave it down in the comments because we're interested to know. So our insurance over a six month period comes to about $1,050. Now that we have talked about the RV costs, the truck costs, and the insurance costs, I wanted to get into the hitch installment. So we actually got our hitch off Facebook by the same man that towed our RV to the storage spot in the first place and we got a Kurt sliding fifth wheel hitch and we paid $450 to get that used off Facebook. I knew it would be what? A thousand. thousand. Yeah. And to get it installed, we paid 1300. Yes, so to get it installed into his lifted truck, we had to actually go to a custom welding shop mm -hmm. and they then welded in the brackets yep. that are able to support our hitch and that was $1,300 alone to get it installed. So the total hitch cost is about $1,750. And you're only gonna need to do that if you have a body lift. So we got a body lift so it doesn't rest on any of the suspension components, none of that changes, so it's just lifting the body of the truck. If you lifted the suspension, you likely wouldn't have to have a fifth wheel custom model. So at our first spot, we actually paid $700 a month to be in the middle of a pretty big city. That spot was not necessarily ideal though. They didn't really have gravel pads or anything fancy there. So we paid $700 a month to stay in the middle of the city, but then that was only a seasonal campground. So when we did get our hitch installed, we were actually able to move our own RV to the spot we're at now, which is $650 a month through the winter, but now that it is the springtime, summertime, it's $625 a month. Mm -hmm. So as I was saying at the beginning of this video, um, if you weren't traveling, these costs would be cut down dramatically. Mm -hmm. If you were just stationary and had somebody else move your RV, we would only be like $6,000 into this. But because of the truck, we are in 
way deep. And we want it to be reliable for the road because we ought, this is our lifestyle now. We're going to be living on the road. Yes, and we don't want to be broken down on the side of the road. Nope. We do want to have... Taking no risks. We want to have everything fixed in our truck. And so that's what we're in the mission of doing. And that's why it costs so much because literally almost everything has been fixed. And that's what you're going to have to face if you get an older truck. So that brings our total cost to around $42,000. That does not include like monthly rent payments because that's not really something that no. I felt was necessary to track. I mean, the rent is really like cheap if you live in an RV. Like $650 mm -hmm. for both of us? Yeah. That's really inexpensive. That's I, only $325 a month for each of us. But if you want to know what to expect on the road, that's about up to what you're going to have to spend if you get an older truck that you will expect to have to fix. Yes, this is just our personal situation and we felt like talking about it and clearing it up with people who are young and also want to try RV living. Mm -hmm. This is the reality of it. So yes, that is all we have to talk about for the cost of our RV living. If that's all you came here for, then thanks for stopping by. Anybody else who's on this channel, this is my boyfriend Zane. You can finally meet him. <laughs> and I hope you guys enjoyed this segment of the video. The rest of my video is gonna be Ashland style, so. This morning I woke up to the sound of peaceful rain hitting the roof of our home. I've needed this peace after the stressful week that I had prior. Just all of the financials of getting a new transmission in the truck have really stressed me out, along with the timeline of us leaving. Y'all, this mountain of laundry has only gotten bigger and bigger since I recorded this. No, I haven't folded it yet. I'm heading off to my class. I'm gonna have a good class today. So I just got done with my class and it was a really good class. It was a 45 minute yoga school class. You guys know the drill. Since this video was talking about how much we spend with our V life, I thought there was no better opportunity to bring up our Wi-Fi situation. So how we get Wi-Fi here in our RV, I didn't want to risk getting something that wouldn't work everywhere. So this is totally not sponsored by the way. We purchased this Glocal Me off Amazon and the device itself was like $180 I want to say at the time that we bought it. We bought it like a year ago and it actually kind of just looks like a smartphone. Um, it's powered with Android and it uses data. It connects to every single phone tower in the area so it always will try its best to get you the best connection. But you do get to pay for how much data you use every single month which is a feature that I like because some months we use more, some months we use less. Our typical average Wi-Fi bill that we are doing this month is 100 gigabytes of data for $120. You know, that is kind of expensive because I know typical Wi-Fi where you don't have to track the data is like 70 bucks a month. But this is genuinely felt like the safest option that wasn't Starlink, that wasn't like overly expensive to get the initial setup. This one was super simple to do. It's been reliable for us so far and I don't regret buying it. We just leave our little Wi-Fi device plugged in and put over here and it just stays here forever. I really had to get my grocery shopping done and we're on a tight budget because we have to pay for the transmission so I only spent like $80 and I didn't get all my fancy food this time because you know what we can't afford it right now and that's okay I'm so learning to be okay with it so I just got my groceries and I put those away but tonight for dinner it's leftover night I also found these pepperoni calzones from Aldi that is always a great combination to have with leftover alfredo okay and also do not knock on these Aldi probiotic sodas. They're really good and they taste equivalent to Olipop or Poppy. Here's my little din din. I dipped that calzone in some warmed up marinara sauce and I didn't really film anymore tonight because I just have not been feeling my 100% and that's okay. 
Also, since my vacuum broke, I've just been having to use this little hose attachment vacuum. Um, I'm wondering if it's the vacuum belt though that got broken. Has anybody that's had a vacuum on this earth know what the diagnosis could be? Why is my brush roller not spinning? It's okay though, I'm really glad that we at least got a fancy enough vacuum to have all the extra attachments, so I'm not too worried about it. I've really been letting my housework get the best of me in this stressful transitional time. Um, I've just kind of been letting everything build up and sometimes that's okay. I think that life comes in waves and fluctuations. We're not always feeling 100% to do everything on our list and that is so okay. I was so happy today to just sit in my clean home and be able to get my journaling done. The stress that I've been feeling lately has been starting to dissipate and I am happy to say that we are feeling much better about our situation and getting on the road to the mountains. At this point we leave in less than two weeks and my car buyer fell through so I almost feel like I'm scrambling to get it sold but at the same time I'm going to keep trusting and having faith that everything will get worked out. God has been answering our prayers the closer that we get so I am thankful for where I'm at. I'm gonna let go of my stress and worry and I'm just gonna keep praying y'all. I know somebody's gonna want to buy my car. Everything is okay. I know that the situation that we are in is only pushing us towards more self-growth, more self-understanding, and I know that this path is exactly where God wants us to be. When I tell you I feel this in my heart and soul that this is what I was meant to be doing, I mean it entirely. All right, here's what I got for dinner. So I've got scrambled barbecue beef, green beans, and mac and cheese. I never used to eat scrambled barbecue beef like this until I got with Zane. I think it's really good and it's really easy. Obviously, everything has to be seasoned really well. Um, I really have not been feeling like doing much at all. I know that this will change in the upcoming weeks and it's important to just go with the flow, but whoever's still watching, I appreciate you, friend. I'm gonna eat my food now. I am really excited to make YouTube my full-time thing. I am so excited to put so much effort into my videos. I even have a second camera that I can use. A really fancy DSLR, okay, okay. And I'm just really excited to just put my best foot forward. I know that I have this creativity inside of me. I just wanna figure out how to express it. Making films and videos has always been a strong suit of mine so i just really hope to make something out of this anyways friends thank you so much for sticking till the end and i'll see you next week